hello out there to all my friends of Who Does the Dev Ministry. This is Pastor Evangelist Teacher Judy Carney from Akron, Ohio. We're going to do something that I feel today is going to really be a benefit, not just to this ministry, but also to each and every one of you that are out there. I'm going to do a teaching as if you were in my in my teaching class. I'm going to go exactly the way I do it here. The only difference will be you'll have to go into my into my uh, email and let me know what questions you have because here in my presence they can just say pastor what's that or teacher help me so I, I don't want you to ever go away without knowing exactly what we're feeling to project into your mind about the blood of Jesus and the Word of God and the truth it's going to be something that's going to be prominent in this final hour that it's got to be the truth got to be the truth of God man cannot help us it's all in the hands of our Lord and Savior Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the Holy Trinity. But today, as we're going to go into this, I'm going to start out a little differently. I'm going to start to where I would usually go to be the end of my teachings here at the house, but I'm going to give you your homework. Yeah, I'm a teacher, and so naturally, you're going to have homework. So, if you, like I've told you, be sure to bring your pen and paper or something to write with. I'll give it to you, but that's all right. You'll have time to pick up one because you'll get it right out of the class. But in the meantime, your homework will be Read, reread the class read and study Jeremiah 18, 1 through 12. That's where our class read will be today. And then we have Romans 9, 21 and Isaiah 64, 8, which will be the opening scriptures that will go with Jeremiah 18, 2. We'll study, we'll be with us today as our study. Now we're going to go into this and I am so excited because this is something that I feel has been much neglected by many people that are supposedly out there doing the work of the Lord. I got this because I felt that the Lord wanted me to tell you and to ask you, how dizzy have you been on the potter's wheel? You know what that means? When you're in the hands of the Lord and you're spinning around on this wheel, when you get to that wheel, it's supposed to help build you up. You get pushed down as if you're clay and you're, you're, you're clay in the, in the hands of the Lord and you get pushed down. But then he takes the beautiful nail-scarred hands and he starts building from that wheel and that potter, that, that piece of clay that is nothing. We're nothing but a piece of mud. And he takes that clay and he starts forming it again. We fall. We get back up. But he puts us on the wheel. He doesn't give up. He says, we'll stick you back on that potter's wheel. We'll start with our hands and the Holy Ghost and I, the spirit of the blood of Jesus, the hands, the nail scarred hand, will start molding you and molding you as you spin around the wheel. We'll be, we'll be forming you, forming you into a vessel of honor, a vessel of honor, children. Do you know what that means? A vessel being ready, ready for either death, hell, or the grave. Hell, we don't want, but if you're going to go to hell, you don't want to be on that potter's wheel and be taught and say no. But you want to go through the wheel that's going to take you into the presence of the Lord, into the fullness of God, into the being framed into a wonderful vessel for God. I'm telling you this because it's so necessary to realize when he says, I chastise those he loves, he's getting ready to put you on the wheel. But you better get there with joy in your heart, knowing that, yes, he is going to put me on that wheel. Yes, I am going to go around. Yes, the nail-scarred hands are going to be forming me. Yes, the Holy Ghost will be filling me. And yes, I'll be made rapture-ready or grave-ready, whichever it's going to be. You know that we don't have much time to work. And I'm trying to get everybody, including you pastors and teachers out there, don't just shut me off. You might be shutting off something that God wants you to hear. Listen to something. I've listened to many different ones, and that's where I've gotten the knowledge that some things are not just right in some places I've been. And I'm trying to help others to get it right because they've got a congregation of people waiting to be fed. Thus saith the Lord instead of what thus saith man. I'm not a person to hold up what man says, but you show me in God's holy word and you've got my attention and you've got God's attention. The word, the word, the word, the word, the Bible word. The, I go with, like I told you, the King James Version because I feel that's the closest that I'm going to find I don't have, it doesn't add to or take from the original manuscript. But I'm telling you this right now. Start studying today because you want to be ready when Jesus comes back. So in the meantime, let's get into it. I have called this, How Dizzy Have You Been on the Potter's Wheel? And then as I read it, the Lord gave me a subtopic. Backslidden America, join us on the potter's wheel. Does that make sense? It does to me. I've seen how the backslidden is. I had a vision 
And in the vision, I saw the American flag folded as unto death. I saw people sitting in seats, open seats, as if they were in an outdoor arena. They were sitting there with their eyes covered, their ears covered, and their mouths covered. They were sitting there to be fed. They were sitting there being insured. In they were supposed to be being fed the truth of God. But they weren't hearing it. They weren't seeing it. And they weren't speaking it. We've gotten so, so I would say lazy, that the churches are not getting the truth. They're not awakening the people. They're not getting them into the truth. They're allowing them to be half-fed to get their money and get them in there and starving them. They're not making them ready. They're spiritually starving for what they're going to need to be ready for death and, and, and to be ready for the rapture. I'm telling you, children, I've been dealt with, like I told you. I'm not a kid. I'm 83 years young. But I'm going to tell you this. He's kept me here for one reason. I'm not afraid to have to go against denominations because God isn't a denomination. God is, thus saith the Lord, he is the church, the only church through the blood of Jesus Christ is one church under God. Not one denomination, not another denomination, not what people sat down at a table and said, this is what we're going to need. Forget that. Man has ruined what God has planned. God planned it to be under the following of his son Jesus. I think Jesus said, follow thou me. He didn't say, follow what some people sit down at a table and say, this is going to be our bylaw. This is going to be what we believe in. This is going to be our statements of faith. No, my children. He sat down and he let the, he's, he's taken the prophets of old and set them down and let them write, thus saith the word of God out of the Holy Ghost in them. That's why I don't trust other things, but I will trust thus saith the Lord. And I'm going to get you to where you want to be fed more and more of what God says. So in the opening scriptures today, it is Jeremiah 18 and 2. Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. He's going to cause. If he can get us on that wheel off, and if we get dizzy enough, we're going to want to listen. We're not going to want to keep going around and around and have to go around and around and not know what thus saith the Lord and how it's going to help us. He says he will cause it. Romans 9.21 Has not the powder over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? I want to be on the honor roll. I don't want to be on somebody's roll where I don't have the little thing that says this is your week to get to go up there and you to use the blackboard and tell them what to want. I want the honor roll in this school. I want to be held up by the blood of Jesus. I want the Holy Ghost and the Lord Jesus to say, that's my bride. That's who I am forming. That's why I died. That's why my blood was shed. Because of thus saith the Holy Scripture. And we're giving you that potter's wheel is the best thing if you stay on it in the right frame of mind. With the right teaching. With the right word of God. With the right desire. Desire to do what God wants. You want to be an honorable? You want to be an honorable vessel? Then stick to the potter's wheel. Let the Holy Lord show you. Let the Scriptures be your teaching. Then I went to Isaiah. 64 8 it says but now O lord thou art our father we are the clay thou art our potter and we all are the work of thy hand thank god we still have the hand of god instead of the hand of man to mess us up the hand of man which will take that clay and throw it out and at the end it'll go on some dump pile where there's nothing for it to be left but it's a smashed piece of pottery with a vessel without honor that's no good for any place no church, no kid, no children should even see it. Nobody. It's not worth being brought into the subject. It's, it's junk when it's not in the right hands. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to read it. I'm sorry if I'm looking a little bit down because I've, I've got it here, but I didn't memorize it. This is what I do in my class. I have an introduction. And after we go through these opening scriptures, we have an introduction. And the Holy Spirit gives it to me. I write it down, and we discuss it. The introduction today is, I love this, spin, spin, spin. Here we are again on this marvelous potter's wheel. Where the nail-scarred hands of our precious Jesus are molding us and making us into a beautiful vessel of honor. To be used by him to help others, to help others, to be ready when the trumpet blows and the bride of Christ will be called to meet their groom in the air. That's the potter's wheel that I want us all to be on. That's the one I want us to follow. Let the hands of God mold us. Let those nail-scarred hands just make us into that vessel of honor. Children, you have no thing after today saying, I don't know how to do it. You do know how to do it. You have to get in the Word. You have to listen to it. But you've got to let the Word build you up and not 
that's teaching man doctrine. I'll be honest with you. Then I go into this. Of course, at that time, the class had many questions. Their hands will go up and they'll start, Pastor, what's this? Da, 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 da. And we get into discussion. So like I said, I've always got my email. And you can always ask this. I'll always get back into it. One way or another, you'll get your answer. And I'm going to say, it'll be through God. So in this then, as I go into more of the introduction, with the hands of Jesus and the mind of Christ and our special anointing from the Holy Ghost and his power to change us, in that moment, we are going to be with our groom Jesus, to be with him forevermore. That's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to that day when the trumpet blows and we can be with him forever. Children, be ready. Do not be back. Don't miss it. Many of my people are falling are failing me in this final hour, saith the Lord. Now this is a message from God. This isn't thus saith me. May are failing failing me, saith the Lord. They must allow themselves to be put on the potter's wheel, so they can be molded and made over into vessels of honor and ready to be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. Take advantage of this time to permit yourself to be made rapture ready, ready to ready rapture ready. While you are on this wheel, the hands of Jesus, by his holy divine blood and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, will take this human clay and form it into a great holy vessel to be pleasing for her groom, Jesus. Yield to all that has been made available to you. Pray fast and live in the holy word of God. Take great anointings daily to strengthen you in your spirit so you will be holy as he is holy. There is no other way to make sure you are rapture ready but to obey the Lord and do all he asks of you. No longer dizzy from spinning on this wheel, we're finally rapture ready. Praise God, rapture ready. Rapture ready. Do you know that? Wonderful. And I said, we are going to make it, children, because we will be rapture ready. Then the class read comes up at this particular time in my classroom, and we open up our Bibles. In this particular time, I'll do this reading. And it's Jeremiah 18, 1 through 12. The word which came to Jeremiah the Lord, saying, Arise, and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. When I went down to the potter's house, number three, and behold, he wrote a work, he wrought a work on the wheels. Number four, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again, another vessel. It seemed good to the potter to make it. See what I said? We go down, we get our clay out of hand. The Lord lets us go back to the potter's wheel. But he's always going to be there to help us. And now he's speaking to a house of Israel. Cannot I do, the, do with you this as this potter saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in mine hand, O house of Israel. So what does it matter about O house of America? What are we doing about this? What are we doing about it? Jeremiah 18.7 And what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. America's destroying themselves by allowing themselves not to be in where God teaches them, but they're willing to accept what anything is said except the truth of God. I am so worried about it. I am so concerned about it because I love America. I just don't love how they're not serving God. I was born here. I was raised here. But you know what? They have defaced God to the point where I hate to say it sometimes, but I don't want people to know all about it. And I'm trying to get other people out of it before we've completely missed the rapture and the, and the, the time to be with Jesus. Number nine, and at that instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. He's going to take care of it and he'll speak and they better be willing to answer, thus saith what's right. Because if they can't say, remember, the Bible says, yay, yay, no nay, nay is in my Bible. You better say, yes, yes, I'm ready. Yes, yes, I'm following. Yay, 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 I'm going to be there. Yay, 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 saith the Lord. Number 10, if it do evil, if it, if it do evil in my sight, and that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. America has been benefiting of the good of God for years and years because they came here to serve God and they backslidden on God. The American flag that I saw was folded as unto death and I've seen that many, many, over 40 years ago in a vision. And it's like I saw it just today because what God shows you, nobody can rob you from. I'll never been robbed from no matter where I've been. I never will be. But I'm telling you this day, he gave me that to help you people today. 
I've been sent of God, and I'm here to do one thing. Enhance your walk and fill you with the truth so that you'll want more of God and stop following man and follow God. Now, therefore, number 11, now, therefore, go to speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and America, as I'm saying, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return you now, every one, from his evil way and make your ways and your doings good. Why do you think America is in such a depression? He's trying to get the attention by pulling off. He's letting them feel that their comfort zone isn't there anymore. They, he wants them to say, God, I need your help. Oh, God, how am I going to get on this? Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, help me with this. My bills are piling up. My children are going hungry. I don't have food. I don't have a place to put them. My Lord and my God, let me fall on my knees and say, forgive me as every American should do right now. Every father, mother, and aunt, and uncle, and sister, and brother, and children should say, I want to fall before the Lord and say, I need your help before it's too late. You backslidden America. And don't just sit there and look at me as an old lady. I'm telling you, you better get down on your knees. You ain't seen nothing yet as to what's going to happen if you don't soon turn to your God. Number 12. And they said, there is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices, and we will everyone do the imagination of his evil heart. How many places I've been in churches that I visited, I see that their own devices, not what God wants. They want the devices that are in people and church in the in the homes and that they want to do the thing. The camping that came is what was supposed to be a good thing. It took people out of weekends away from God by taking them out of the churches. What they were getting, they are weren't even getting that anymore. So what do you think they stand? They've been being robbed by people let what does he say? What did he tell us? Beware when the day comes when these things become more important to you than me. When they become more important, he's told us that we should beware of those days. We better look out, children. I'm telling you the truth. You know that I'm telling you the truth today. Anybody that's got the spirit of the blood in them and the Father of the Holy Ghost, they will know this is the blessed day of the Lord. Then I've come to the part where we have what we call the conclusion. I hope that this has riled some of you up, you know, and that you'll get in there and you will start getting ready and you'll get people in your church. You go to your pastors and you'll say, I heard somebody say, we're not getting fed all the things because of doctrine. And show them, he isn't a doctrine, he's a God. And he has one doctrine, it's God Almighty, the blood of Jesus. That's the doctrine, the, the one church under God. Not under men, not under what you say, not your bylaws, not your statement of faith, but under God. Under thus saith the holy word of God, children. Thus saith the holy word of God. In the last days there will be seekers of pleasure more than seekers of God. That's what he just told me to tell you. And I see it in many people I love very much. People and families that I know. Let's say that I see it too close to home sometimes. And I don't like what I see. Because they're doing what they should have been doing years ago. What they've been called to do. They're not doing it anymore. They're seekers of pleasure. Oh, this will be fun. Let's do this. Big deal. What if Jesus comes when you're having fun and you haven't done your prayer time and you've gotten lukewarm? I judge you'd be hot or cold because if you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my heart. I'll spew you out into the flames of hell. Lukewarm means you're in the mouth because you didn't get there if he's got to spew you out. Remember that. So in conclusion, America... You are being warned. Jesus is coming soon, and you have turned your back on him and have become more backslidden than are ready, than are ready to, make, to make that one flight when Jesus comes for his bride. It says, Turn from your wicked ways and serve God, or there will be many, many left behind, saith the Lord. That is to saith me. When he said that, that's the Holy Spirit saying, saith the Lord to you people. And this is another thing he's saying to you. This is the Holy Ghost thing. I have called and called you, but you've turned a deaf ear unto my cries. Awake, awake, I say unto you. The hour is a late one, and I'm coming soon, saith the Lord. And I put here in my thing, what a wake-up call from the Lord that it says. What are you going to do about it? Well, for one thing, we're going to pray right now. Those of you who have, 
lukewarm or you're backslidden and you need to get yourself right with God, we're going to do the sinner's prayer. I'm coming very soon with the one for healing, but right now we're going to do the sinner's prayer. All of you join us right now in saying, Oh God, I come to you. Forgive me of my backsliding. I know you are the Son of God and that your blood will cleanse me of all my sins. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and I will serve you the rest of my life. Come on in, Jesus. Come on in. Now, if you meant that and you left him in, if you meant that prayer, Jesus came in and you are free. Serve God and go on to receive ye the Holy Ghost. Because Jesus said, after they left the, up, the upper room, he said, after they left, they should go to the upper room after they were saved, after he died. The blood was shed. He said, now go to the upper room and stay there to you and do the power. You will need this Holy Ghost power to be rapture ready. God bless you all. Prayers and love, Pastor Carney, Pastor Judy Carney. See you in the rapture. Remember, it takes the blood of Jesus for dying. We're going to take the Holy Ghost for flying. Keep that in mind.